empirical versus classical probability methods. Our objective, compute and interpret probabilities using the empirical or the classical method. Let's remind ourselves what we know. We know the definition of probability, a measure of the likelihood of a random phenomenon or chance behavior occurring. Okay, so let's talk about this empirical versus classical stuff. Probabilities deal with the likelihood that a particular outcome will be observed. There are two methods for determining probabilities, empirical and classical. Let's start with empirical. Empirical method involves probabilities that are computed based upon the outcomes of a probability experiment. So you've done an experiment and you're computing the probabilities based on that experiment. Okay, so to calculate the probability of an event, it's approximately equal to the relative frequency of the event, which is the frequency of the event divided by the number of trials of the experiment. Okay, it's all, it's, this is the key piece. The empirical method means you did a probability experiment and that's how you're determining your probabilities. Probability results are proximate because if you do different trials of the experiment, you're gonna, they're gonna lead to different outcomes and therefore different estimates of the probability of an event. For example, you flip a coin 10 times Right, you're going to have so, so, some number of heads and some number of tails. That's probably going to be different than the next time you flip a coin 10 times. You're going to wind up with probably a different number of heads and tails and therefore slightly different probabilities because you've done a probability experiment. Let's take a look at an example here, how this comes into play. An insurance agent currently insures 182 teenage drivers. Last year, 24 of the teenagers had to file a claim on their auto policy. Based on these results, this is what we've done. We're using the results from an experiment. We took 182 drivers. We, we gathered, we, our experiment was on 182, and 24 had to file a claim. Based on these results, what is the probability that a teenager will file a claim on his or her auto policy in a given year? Okay, probability of a claim. Okay, now this is obviously, well, let me, let me finish first with this one. Okay, well, we have 24 who will file a claim out of 182. And that gives us, uh, if I did, I did the math with my calculator, approximately 0.132. Okay, so obviously, so... This is, this is the probability for this particular group of 182 teenagers. If we chose another group of 182 teenagers, we might find that 26 filed a claim, and that would make a change to this number here. Okay, so again, the probability results are approximate because different trials can lead to different outcomes. So the empirical method is based upon an experiment you've done. Versus the classical method. Let me get my paper hopefully straight. Okay, the classical method is a little bit different. Okay, the probabilities that are computed based on counting techniques. Okay, that's the key piece there. Okay, we're actually, we're not going to look at a particular uh, a particular experiment, we're going to look at the mathematics behind it, more, more mathy, I guess, requires equally likely outcomes. Each outcome has the same probability of occurring, and in this case, the probability event, number of ways E can occur divided by number of possible outcomes. Okay, number of possible. So here's the difference. The denominator, number of possible outcomes. We're going to calculate that mathematically and that is part of our counting techniques. Okay, a pair of fair six-sided dice is rolled. Compute the probability of rolling a sum of seven. We're not gonna do an experiment and roll the die 35 times. We're gonna come up with a probability using counting techniques. 
Well, let's first list all possibilities. So I'm gonna put die, die number one over here, and I'm gonna put die number two over here. So I'll just kind of, you know, just kind of do it like this. And die number one, so we could roll die number, uh, yeah, we could roll a one, one. I don't even, I'm not gonna do parentheses because that's just gonna save me time. I could roll a one, one. Die one is a one, die two is a one. I could roll a one, two. Die one is a one, die two is a two. And as you might imagine, this could continue like that. My first die could be a one, my second die could be a one, et cetera, one, two, one, three, out the one, six, all the way through one comma six. Or my first die could now be a two, and my second die could be a one, or my second die could be a two, or a three, or a four, or a five, or a six. Okay? Continuing, I'm gonna put them all down here so we can see some of the math behind it. My first die could be a three, and then I can do the same thing with my second die. My first die is a three. My second die can be a one through six. My first die could be a four, and my second die could be a one through six. My first die could be a five, and my second die again could be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And finally, my first die could be a six, and my second die could again be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay? So a pair of fair six sided die is rolled, dice is rolled. These are all the possible outcomes. Number, whoops, let me go down as you can see. Number of possible outcomes. Mathematically, okay, there are, whoops, I need to get my, so you can see it. There are 36, I listed them all. There are 36 possible outcomes mathematically. We know that, of course, is six times six. Six outcomes from die number one and six outcomes from die number two, means there are 36 possible outcomes, and here they all are listed. This is the sample space of all possible outcomes. Okay, compute the probability of rolling a sum of seven. Okay, get that out of the way. What is the probability of rolling a seven? That's not, not rolling a seven, let's say rolling a sum of seven, because the probability of rolling a seven is zero. Rolling a sum of seven. Okay, well, how many of these outcomes give me a sum of seven? One plus six, two plus five, three plus four, four plus three, five plus two, six plus one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, give me a sum of seven. So the number of ways a sum of seven can occur is six. The number of possible outcomes is 36. So the probability of rolling a sum of six, excuse me, a sum of seven is one over six, which is approximately 0 0.017. I think it's 0 0.016 repeating. Fraction decimal between zero and one. Okay, so this, we didn't do an experiment, right? We didn't roll the two die 50 times and see how many sevens came up. We use counting techniques, let's go back up to here. We use counting techniques to determine, in this case I listed them all, how many total outcomes there were, 36. We then we looked at how many were seven, and we said the probability of rolling a seven mathematically, without doing an experiment, would be one out of six.